Telling Time by Jules Holder. When people talk about telling time, they don't mean, hey, time, I got something to tell you. No, telling time just means saying what time it is. And by the end of this book, you'll know how to tell time and what time is. But to learn how to tell time, shouldn't you know what time is first? Here's what time is. Time is when things happen. And time is how long things take. So to describe when things happen, we're going to the movies at 1. I drive my race car at 9. I start to eat lunch at 12. I get up at 7.30 in the morning. How long time how long things take. It takes two seconds to brush a baby's tooth. It takes about two minutes to brush my teeth. It takes 10 minutes to brush my dog. A thousand minutes if I have a big dog and if I use a toothbrush. It takes two hours to clean up my room. I wonder how many years it would take to clean up the world. So that's what time is. When things happen and how long things take. Okay, but why do we tell time? I'm so glad you asked. Well, we tell time so we'll know when school starts. We, we tell time so we know when our friends are coming over. We tell time so we won't miss our favorite TV show. And if we couldn't tell time, we'd never see the beginning of a movie. That's why we tell time. Okay, okay, but how do we tell time? Well, we tell time in chunks, big chunks, big humongous chunks and little teeny trunks, eensy teensy itty bitty chunklets, shrimps. Let's start with the shrimps. There are three kinds of little chunks. The shortest little chunk is a second, but I can help eat this whole candy bar in five seconds. The middle sized little chunk is a minute. There are 60 seconds in every minute. Cool your jets, Mikey, I'll be down in a minute. The longest little chunk is an hour. There are 60 minutes in every hour. I had so much homework, it took me a whole hour to finish it. We'll, we will tell little chunks of time on clocks and watches. A watch is really just a clock you wear on your wrist. We also tell the time in big chunks of time on calendars. So what's a calendar? It's a pretty picture that hangs it's a pretty picture with numbers below it that hangs on a wall and that stack of pages with numbers on them that sits on a desk. Every calendar tells the days and every day has a name of its own. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And the calendar tells the months. Every month has a name of its very own. January, February, March, April, May, June. July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. A calendar tells the years and a calendar tells the dates. Notice the commas in these dates. Friday, October 1st, 1999. Saturday, January 1st, 2000. Monday, February 29th, 2016. You know what's special about that year? 2016 was a leaf year. Now, what are the big chunks of time? Days, weeks, months, years, plus decades, centuries, and millennia. The shortest big chunk is a day. Then comes a month. The month has about 30 days and about four weeks. Then comes a year. The year has 365 days and it has almost exactly 52 weeks. And it has the 12 months. Then comes a decade. A decade is 10 years. I'm less than a year old. I'm a decade old. That's 10 years. Want to know how old I am? I'm a whole century old. And that's the next biggest chunk, a century. A century lasts 100 years. The biggest chunk of time is a millennium. A millennium lasts a thousand years. That's 10 centuries. Okay, okay. Calendars show the big chunks, days, months, and all that. And a clock shows the shrimps, seconds, minutes, hours, and all that. But how do clocks show the seconds and minutes and hours and all that? Two ways, digital 
an analog. A digital clock has big numbers in the middle. Here's a digital clock. An analog has little numbers around the edge and hands that point to the numbers. Here's an analog clock. So you want to learn how to tell time? Let's start with the digital. Digital clocks have two sets of number. One set comes before the colon. That's the two dots. And the other comes after it. First number tells the hours. Look at this clock. The number here tells you it's three o'clock. On this clock, it tells you it's six o'clock. On this one, it tells you it's 10 o'clock. And on this one, it tells you it's 12 o'clock. We read zero minutes as o'clock. Most clocks only go up to 12 o'clock, though there are 24 hours. 24 hour clocks too. There's no such thing as 33 o'clock or 127 o'clock. The numbers after the colon mark mark the minutes. How many minutes are there in an hour? 60. 60 minutes in an hour. So 3.15 is 15 minutes past 3 o'clock. Some people call that 3.15. Some call it a quarter, quarter past 3. They both mean the same thing. This one is 21 minutes past 6 o'clock. This one is 44 minutes past 10 o'clock. You can call it 10.40. They both mean the same thing. What time does this clock say? Some people call it 12.30. Some call it half past 12. They both mean the same thing. How about this one? That's 10 minutes after 1 o'clock or 1.10. They both mean the same thing. And this one? Well, some people call it 11.45. Some call it a quarter of 12. All together now, they both mean the same thing. So now you've got your minutes and your hours. One more thing is a.m. and p.m. When you're doing something in the morning, like eating breakfast, that's a.m. But if it's afternoon, after 12 o'clock, like eating supper, that's p.m. So breakfast might be at 6 a.m., but supper is at 6 p.m. Now let's look at analog clocks, the one with the hands. They're not really hands, like people hands. They don't have fingers, they don't wear mittens. So why are they called hands? Well, because they point, like hands, like this. Clocks have three kinds of hands, little hands, big hands, and second hands. Second hands tell the seconds, big hands tell the minutes, and the little hand tells the, the, wanna guess? Little hand tells the hours. Now these are some funny looking clocks, some numbers that are funny looking that you might see on an analog clock are called Roman numerals and they just show the digits for one through 12. Now, here we have the big hand and it tells the minutes. I call it the long hand and it will usually reach to the end of the clock. Then the short hand is the hour hand. It usually doesn't pass the big numbers. See how it's shorter? I always think hour is a shorter word, minutes is a longer word. Then they have the second hand that tells the seconds. Not all clocks have the second hand, but most do. So how do you tell time with hands? The second hand is easy. You can watch it move. Every number it passes, that's another five seconds. You held your breath for 53 seconds, you're turning blue. Every time it passes 12 at the top of the clock, that's a minute. 60 seconds make one minute. Then we have the big minute hand. The minute hand moves slower than the second hand. Every time it passes a number, that's another five minutes. Hurry up, the movie starts in five minutes. It takes 60 minutes to go all the way around. 60 minutes make one hour. And then we have the little hour hand. It's the slowest hand of all. It takes one hour to go between numbers. Mom, I'm starving. It's been a whole hour since breakfast. It takes 12 hours to go all the way around the clock. So that's how you tell how long things take on an analog clock. But how do you tell what time it is? Look and see where the big hands are where, and the little hands are. When the little hand is on the three and the big hand is on the 12, it's three o'clock. When that minute hand is on the 12, we read it as o'clock. How about when the little hand is on the four? Well, that's four o'clock. 
And when the little hand is on the seven, seven o'clock. Yep, seven o'clock. Here's a smiley face. Now let's move the big minute hand too. When the little hand is on the three and the big hand is on the one, well, now it's been five minutes past three o'clock or 3.05. And how about when the hour hand is halfway between the seven and the eight, the minute hand is on the six. Well, it's not eight yet. It's halfway around seven o'clock. So it is 7.30. When the minute hand points to the six, that's 30 minutes. We've been halfway around the hour. Ooh, okay, here's a tough one. What time is it when the little hand is almost to the nine and the big hand is exactly on the nine? Well, it's not quite nine o'clock yet, is it? It's still eight, but it's been five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 minutes. So that time is 8.45 or quarter of nine because it's almost nine. Here's one that's even tougher. What about when the little hand is just past the nine and the big hand is one past dot the three? Well, if we're counting five minutes between each number, five, 10, 15, plus one more is 16. So it's nine, 16. Here are some more analog clocks. See if we can tell the time here. I'll find the hour hand. It's not to the four yet. So we hook back, it's three. And 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 3.30. 30. Okay, find the hour hand. It's really close to the 7, right? It just started the 7 o'clock hour. It's 7, 5, 6, 7. It's 7.07. 7. How about this one? The, the hour hand is on the 1, and the minute hand is pointing to the 12. Remember, that reads o'clock. So it's 1 o'clock. How about this one? Ooh, it's almost 12 o'clock. This is one minute until 12 o'clock. That's 11.59. One minute, it'll be 12 o'clock exactly. Now this one's pretty tricky too. The hour hand is pointing at the 11 and the minute hand is pointing at the 11. Hmm, it's not 10, it's really close to 11. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. It's 11, 55. So that's only five minutes until 12. And then look at this one. 12 o'clock on the dot. Both hands are pointing to the 12. So it's 12 o'clock. Great job, guys, telling time. Thanks for watching.